Hey everyone and welcome to this Saturday session. This is Edwin Overa, aka the successful freelance dancer. Just want to inform you of my latest interview. It was such a blast. It was a up and down kind of roller coaster of laughter, nonstop laughter, and it was very high paced energy. Um, and the person who I interviewed is Rebecca Rasmussen. Rebecca and I have known each other for about 10 years on and off. Um, my twin brother Roberto Overa used to dance with her in Momix. Dance Theater, which is a company based in Connecticut, in Washington Depot, Connecticut, alongside Palabolus. Um, they're almost like sister companies, and they're pretty um, wonderful to, you know, have watched and work um, alongside these other group of amazing performers. Now, what's so funny um, about this conversation is that as we were doing it, my young daughter, um, Vivian Rose, uh, inter interrupted us quite a few times. Nevertheless, we still were able to um, share and you know, document Rebecca's story about how she got into dance, her experience as a professional uh, athlete and performer. Um, and I say athlete because when you hit this tier of the performing arts, you really are like almost equal to Olympic athlete. You work at least eight to 10 hours a day. You travel nonstop close to eight to 10 months out of the year. And I mean, all over the world. So in my opinion, she is a professional athlete. Uh, on top of that, Rebecca is also a master teacher and a mentor. And, um, She's also been uh, perform she has also performed with other companies such as Catapult Entertainment, Media City Ballet, um, Deda Dance Theater. She's also been in stuff like America's Got Talent, and she's performed at the uh, Kohler's um, International Builder Show, um, which is in Kohler, Wisconsin, not too far away from here. With that being said, take the time, take some notes, listen to what Becca has discovered as a professional performer as in you know, living on the road, uh, suggestions about what you should do when it comes to um, professional advice, and also um, what happens when you get into relationships on the road. That's a really interesting comment that was brought up. Um, so with that being said, enjoy this interview, because I sure did. Be well. Oh, last thing is, make sure that you leave some comments down below. Also, take the time as well to review Rebecca's material, as in social media links, contacts, and everything else. If you have any questions for her, feel free to reach out to her via social media and spark up a conversation. She's all ears. Be well. And here's Rebecca. Hey, hey. Becca, thanks so much for coming on to the, to the interview session. Um, to, to, to help people paint a better picture of where you are in your life right now, share with, with the audience where you physically are at this moment. So I'm physically in Mestre, Italy. It's like a little town right outside of Venice, and I'm here performing with a dance company called Momix. And so we'll be performing for the whole week here in Mestre, and then on to the next cities in Italy. <laughs> now, when you when you're doing these uh, tours with with uh, with Momix, um, how long is your average like stay per city? So it really just depends on the actual tours. Um, so, for example, this week we'll be in Mestre for seven shows. So we'll be here for a whole week, and then the next cities will only be there for two or three days. just depends on um, how the theater is booking the company. Oh, got so it. Sometimes it's one off. Sometimes it's five weeks. Sometimes it's three weeks. It really just depends. No, absolutely. And what, um, for others who are, you know, uh, wondering what, what does Becca do, Becca, you also have a small business, and, and this is one of the reasons why you and I have connected, is to help let people know about what you do in your services. So if you can tell people about what you do as uh, with your freelance business. Yeah, so um, right now I'm really excited. Like, I'm passionate about being a professional dancer still and on stage and all of that, but I'm really excited about trying to help uh, young dancers or older dancers create uh, a successful career for themselves as well in dance or in movement or in health and nutrition or fitness. Like I'm really um, wanting to put myself out there as a mentor, as a teacher, as a supporter for young, for other people to um, create success. So I've been creating uh, programs and connecting with different people online and just giving my tips and guidance for for them basically. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> this is great and what people uh, need to uh, understand and if they don't, they will in this conversation is that like 
you have a lot of years of being a, a not just a professional dancer, but a peak professional dancer. When you get into companies like Momix or Palabolis or Cirque or anything, you're hitting a level of physicality that is equivalent to like Olympic athletes. We get the same injuries. We travel the world extensively just like yourself. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, and because of that, because of those interactions, whether you're you know, jet setting around the world or you're performing in these massive venues, you're taking in a lot of data of what's going on around you. How are you interacting with people on a professional level? What are some things that went wrong or went right with contracts? You know, and mm -hmm. this is what young performers or even veteran performers who have never hit that status as a performing artist should really take note that um, there's a reason why we're giving our advice out and we're, we're trying to help other people um, hit another tier in their life, whether they're in performing arts or whether they're just wanting to get into movement because we've been doing it at such a high level that they should take time to listen to what you have to say because you've been doing it. And share how many years have you been on the road and, and traveling for? <laughs> right now, ooh, it's been two months and I have five and a half more weeks left. Wow. <laughs> but in, in, in general, as a professional dancer, how long have you oh. been performing and doing this stuff for? Oh, I've been doing, I've been with um, this specific company, Momix, for over 10 years now. But before that, I, I, you know, did smaller professional companies and stuff while I was still in school. But this level for over 10 years. Unbelievable, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if people have never heard of Momix, um, just like the company Palabolas that I dance for, some people have never heard of it, but in other places around the world, like for example in Europe, like in Italy, and also down in South America, like in Brazil, this name Momix is like the U2 of the, the performing arts. You guys are always on television. There's you, you people go head over heels when they see the Momix logo, or you know, it's, you live like rock stars. So <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And but as we all know, you know, there's other things that we're passionate about, and this is what I, I love exactly. to hear. So <laughs> going with our very first question, um, what what is the the very first sign that you can recall, or maybe things that your parents have told you, or even your friends and family, that you were going to get into this realm of movement, whether it was a, da a young dancer or into into gymnastics? You know, what what did that ha what happened for you in that part? So um, I was very lucky because my mother was actually a professional dancer and dance teacher. So my mom danced in a modern dance company. She danced in a couple of modern dance companies in L.A. and stuff. But the one that I remember was called Donna Sternberg and Dancers. And so she would bring me to her shows and she would bring me to the rehearsals, my brother and I, actually. And she was also um, working as a dance teacher. So we would go with her to her classes and we would sit on the side of the class and just hang out and and one of the times like I guess she was teaching like for the June show she was teaching the little girls that their dance and I got up and I started learning the dance and then she realized oh Rebecca knows the dance I guess I'll just put her in the piece <laughs> it's like I guess she like is doing it already so I guess I'll just put her in and that's exactly how I started. So I, I wasn't forced into dancing. I was just exposed to it. And then I got to decide if I really wanted to do it or not. And then ever since then, boom, I never stopped. <laughs> Becca, when you first started taking um, dance classes, was it, because, you know, there's the competitive side and then there's like the artistic expression side. So did you do both routes or, or what were you exposed to? Yeah, so I was exposed, like I started dancing at age five, and the dance studios that I danced at were, um, one of them specifically was called Pam Rossi's Dance Ten in Moore Park, in Moore Park, California, where I grew up, and that was a competitive-based dance studio, so I did all the dance competitions, all the conventions, all of the, you know, jazz, hip-hop, like competition style stuff, the sequins, all, you know, I did all of that. It was, <laughs> and I loved it. Like that part of me, I absolutely loved. I did dance team also in high school. Mm. So it was like a huge competition world for me. But also because my mom was a modern dancer, she exposed me to other um dance out there so I was super fortunate on that because I knew there was other things other than competition style dancing so I got to be exposed to Palabolas, to Momix, my mom brought me to see Momix, um, 
to the company that she was dancing for, which was, you know, real. It's like all real modern dance. Like mm -hmm. I didn't have to like, you know, it wasn't just kicking your leg and turning all the time. Yeah, how, many, how many tricks you can <laughs> add in one routine, right? How many tricks? <laughs> so, um, yeah, in that, in that sense, I was really exposed to a huge, to like the whole, you know, the whole dance world and not just one little tiny bubble. Um, so when I went to college, that's where I really got out of the um, competition world and I went more into the ballet and the modern dance where I learned all the classic modern, all the classic jazz and um, I also did tap and all that stuff but I was really exposed to other forms of modern and ballet. Got it. And at, w at what point did you start like um, auditioning for Momix? So I went to the Boston Conservatory. Mm. For dance, that was like a huge transition in my life because I grew up in California and I thought I would stay in California forever because why would you ever leave, right? It's sunny <laughs> and amazing. <laughs> Beaches why everywhere. Would you flee? And I was going to Moore Park College, which had an amazing dance program and the teachers there are amazing, but I really wanted to get my degree. Mm -hmm. That was like my goal. I wanted to get like a college degree. So I went to a Limon workshop that summer because mm -hmm. I got to go to summer dance intensives. That was another thing that like broadened my dance world too. My mom was like, you should go to summer dance intensives. I was like, cool, yay. Um, so I went to a Limon workshop and I was really wanting to transition into going to a different college because at Moore Park College you don't you can't get your degree you, you only can get your mm -hmm. associate's degree Got it. so um he was I, I met people that were going to dance conservatories and I was like what is that what Juilliard what's Juilliard you know I had never heard of these things because I was on the other side of the world so that's what yeah. it felt like <laughs> <laughs> I uh, so when I went to the Boston Conservatory, that's when I, you know, I did Paul Taylor, Lamone, Graham, all of that stuff. And I, my goal as a little girl was to be in a professional dance company and travel around the world, basically. So that's what I wanted to do. And uh, as a senior in college, you, I wanted to audition for, for dance companies. So I went to all the auditions in New York City. I would take the the bus from Boston to New York every weekend, you know, do all of that. And, and I knew Momix because my mom had taken me to see Momix and my friends were auditioning for them. And I was like, oh, I can't. That company's amazing. Like, they're crazy. Like, I thought they were like aliens because they could do like crazy stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But they're like, yeah, they're like, just come, just come. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I went. And that's how. I basically, like the audition process for four moments is, at that time, it was a really long process. Was it a week long? I, I, when I did my audition, it was a week long. It felt like forever. A week and it was yes. like 40 hours, you know, <laughs> like a eight, eight hour days each day, you know. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, we did the, the callback, we did the audition at City Center, then you do the callback mm -hmm. later that day with the boys. Then you do another callback, and they were at the Joyce at that time. So then I went to the Joyce, and I was also auditioning for David Parsons at the time. Wow. And their callback was on the same day. Bad news. Bad news bears. So I did half of Momix's callback, and then the other half I did David's part, David Parsons' callback. I, that's that's some good advice that I'm gonna be like, don't ever do that. <laughs> don't ever do a split audition. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Learning it from my mistakes, don't ever do that. <laughs> yeah, but in the it. end, um, because Moses videotapes everything so he gets to go back and watches and watches everything, because they weren't there for my whole audition, uh, mm. my whole callback. So he went back and and watched it. Anyways, then you call get call back and you go to Connecticut for at that time was two days. Um, and you stay over, you do all of that, and then you get called back, and they want to see how you are, you know, in the work. They haven't quite hired you yet. <laughs> it's Can like, you do it? We want Can you, you to show come learn the show now, but we don't know if we're going to put you on tour. <laughs> oh so God. I was going to go to River North Dance Chicago at that time, actually, and I called them up, and I was like, I'm going to go to Momix. Bye! Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Sorry. 
<laughs> Here's a question. Yeah, I was going there for like an apprenticeship or something like that. I can't even really remember. When you think so about like, it now, it was a really good, you know, pass because whether you're doing an apprenticeship for like a year or six months and then actually being paid and hired by a company, forget about it. Just forget the apprenticeship. Just get in and do the work, you know? Oh, well, I wanted to be with Momix like hands down, but yeah. it takes them a while to choose what they're going to do and what they want and what they're looking for and all that stuff. So... Like, I just had to, I didn't buy my ticket at all to Chicago, and I was, like, going on that Monday, and I was waiting, I was like, they're going to call, they're going to call, <laughs> and they did. And they did. <laughs> now, the question I have is, is pertaining to, um, like, for example, when I auditioned as a male, you know, for, for Palabalus, there was, like, 60 males waiting to try to get that position, right? And so I made it down to the last four guys with Roberto, my twin, which you did work with. Yes. Um, but, but, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Roberto. Uh, but when you auditioned, how many females did you have to compete against? And then out of that pool, how many did they pick, if you can recall? Ooh, so I, I think the, I can't remember how many were at the, like, original audition, but if I go from, like, examples of now how many women audition, you know, it's, like, 200, a yeah. little, little maybe little under 200 who knows you know like 150 let's say there's there's always a ton of women and then you know it gets smaller and smaller as the progressions go so then say the callback is like 20 and then um they only hired two so there was two of us that got hired look at the percentage of that when you think about it. <laughs> oh my god 200 something people and only two people got picked it's just it's yeah. mind-blowing and that's what um, young dancers who are, especially female dancers, you know, it's really competitive to get into a professional company. You, I, but I think the pressure, and for me, like I felt like when I did the auditions, um, the pressure forced you to to bring out another side of who you are on the spot, whether it was yeah. through the improvisation or whether it was like picking up the partnering or or sucking at the partnering, like whatever. Like it, you were forced to have to produce something different than what you normally um, fell into a habit with, you know. And, uh, yeah, pressure does, yeah. does wonderful things to people. Some people, yeah, some and people it's, break it's and some a, people uh, flourish. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, said, I, I said that some people break under pressure. You know, the, the, the anxiety of, like, God, I'm in a room of 200-something people. Am I going to get this right? And other people mm -hmm. flourish on that. They flourish on that energy. And you get picked. You get picked. Like you. You got picked. Yeah, I know. I'm not – I at that time, you know, when you're a younger dancer, it's like – really scary too because you want a job you you want to be like perfect and and Moses is making you improv for the first time like ever in your life basically <laughs> it's like, you're like oh yeah go across the floor and improv by yourself but for me that was huge and really scary like what I have to improv like oh my god I didn't know what that was you know like I don't know because uh, at, at that time, nobody really taught that. And at college, um, there was only, like, one class for it, you know. And it's all with your friends, so it doesn't really matter anyways. Um, but I, so I feel like the pressure can, as you're saying, like, totally make or break you Absolutely. for sure. But it's also, like, learning the choreography. If you pick up choreography really quickly, which for me, that was really helpful because I did that really well. And... The improv part, I guess I did fine. You know, I am sure I did jazz competition improv. Like, I totally was, like, <laughs> giving you kicks and layouts and trying to <laughs> work my unitard, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So funny. Oh, this yeah, is funny. but it's also, like, it, I, I do feel that it's very specific um, when, when you are auditioning, like, the directors and company members are looking for something very specific. And when you fit into that look or that, like, energy of, of the company, then you're pretty good to go if that's what they're looking for. Absolutely. It's, very, it's like, it's very specific. Yeah, it's, yeah I, I've dealt with the same thing. You, you realize how many people, like, say, re replace me after I left the company. You're like, oh, they're really short, stockier, or maybe a little, a little bit taller, muscular. You know, it's, it's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Actually. When you when you're reflecting now, you know who are who are say like one or two people that really influenced you as as an artist and where you are now in your life. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. So I would say influenced. 
Um, there's this wonderful, amazing person. Her name is Denise Gibson, and she had a company. I don't know if she still has it. It's called Dada Dance Theater, but she taught at more at Moore Park College. That's where I went to <clears throat> before I went to the Boston Conservatory. And she, I think, influenced me greatly because she brought out like a character part, like a character side that I never really experienced before. And she was really amazing at um, creating shows that were dance, but also character and being silly and being um, like an actor. And I never because, got that before. Yeah, it's, really. it's super important, especially when you're working with companies like like that you're in right now, and I do freelance with. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's um, yeah. There's so much physical physical physicality, right? Like and character work, and whether you're manipulating a massive puppet like you guys do in some of the in the mm-hmm. moment shows, or if you're utilizing a prop, right? And you got to bring this damn thing to life and give mm-hmm. character to it. Yeah, exactly. Never, That's and that is exactly where I like got to start with that sort of dancing acting um and she was she was a huge influence on my like start to that um <clears throat> because she did all of that care like the kind of the weird more weird stuff you know that everybody wasn't quite doing at the time with like the weird pieces and the weird characters with like the crazy hair and makeup and very Cirque du Soleil, I would oh, say, without like all the acrobatic stuff. You know, it was it was very cool. Um, and uh, another, it's a husband wife couple. Their name is Denon and Sabre Rawls, and they are huge ballroom classic jazz. They did a ton of stuff in the TV. Um, in, in the commercial world back in the day that it did they did a ton of musical theater they choreographed uh staying alive is staying alive oh no are, but here's the thing where 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 is this couple from are they from the east coast or from the west they're coast? from west coast so oh, both it, of it. them are west coast <laughs> both, it, of these, both of these influencers are, are west coast uh oh my gosh I can't remember. You're going to have to edit that one out. Stay no, Alive or we'll, something. We'll, 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 I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, so, they work with Barishnikov. They work with uh, tons of amazing, amazing people. And they, uh, I knew them as a young girl because my mom used to dance at the same studio as them. And they had their own jazz dance company. My mom's modern dance company that she danced with. They, they all rehearsed at the same place. Anyway, so they were one of my teachers at Moore Park College. And I learned a ton of ballroom and a ton of classic jazz for them. But I think I learned most about, like, being a good student and a good performer. Like, that is where, like, being the best type of, like, dancer and student you could possibly be is from the both of them. Like, huge. And Denon wrote a book. They both wrote a book. It's, you know, it's a combined book. I don't have the book with me, actually. Oh, bummer. Do you you normally bring the book with you on the road? (laughs) Huh? Do I normally? No, yeah. I, I brought another book. I have a Kindle, and then I have one oh, okay. book. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a, it's a three-month tour. you got to limit yourself. <laughs> yeah, that, that's another subject we could talk about later, which is how do you pack for three <laughs> months in one suitcase? Like, you, I know. Right? But I would say Denise Gibson and Denon Saber Rawls are one of my top influencers So people um, listening. in my life. Do your research and take a look at these people because you don't know you, you you never know how by doing that research on the names that you just presented how it can affect you and literally you know plant seeds in your brain about movement yes. about professionalism about presentation um, once you watch their work online as yes. we, as we all know um, performers get injured you know whether they have a physical injury with their body or sometimes life on the road can be really tough so you can get men- mentally you know have a lot of challenges uh, how do you cope with not having your family around right so. It's an obstacle. What are, uh, say you can just share one story, it could be any, um, whether it's physical or a situation that you've dealt with, an obstacle, and how did you overcome it? Oh, wow. Well, I'm currently uh, having an obstacle with my shoulder right now. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like rolling it out. Anyways, hopefully I'm going to overcome this soon before I have to do the show. Um Ooh, because you brought up the mental, ooh, the mental challenge. That's a good one, though. 
because you know, he, well, here's one thing that uh, I'll just I'll share. A lot of times, um, what people when they see performers, A-list performers, professional athletes mm-hmm. like we are, um, at this high level, you know, sometimes they don't understand the loneliness that comes with being this type of performer. We travel mm-hmm. to all these different places around the world. We perform in front of thousands and thousands of people. But then here's the thing, though. After that show of 10,000 people or 5,000 people in the audience, you got to go back to your hotel room. Or you got, yeah. and, the, uh, and the separation, the, the emotional drop or, or the, ang- or the uh, intensity drop is really, really high. Yes, this is very true. And I'm like, do I talk about, you know, do you talk about like when you're dating somebody on sure, tour? Sure, that's an obstacle too. How do you keep a relationship <laughs> lasting when you're in another country for five months? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I wanted to talk about that because I feel like like injury. I, I actually knock on wood. I don't really get um, injured. injured yeah, knock on wood. Yeah. That's like so you know it's like I've you know the teardrop has smashed my thumb or like I have a kink in my neck you know or I get really sick or something and the show must go on. So you just do like this tour in Spain. The first day of Spain, I like ate something the night before and I got I was like. Everything was coming out of me, you know, and I have to go to the show. It's like, in that sense, the show must go on. And when somebody gets injured in the show, you you know, I'm dance captain, so you got to figure it all out and you put people in different spots and this and that. But, um, but I think like the mental part of touring is huge. And that's like, like you said, that's something that people don't often really talk about because... You know, you don't really know about it until you're actually on tour. And it's very different from when you first start touring because that's a whole, like, when I first got the job and I was going to be, my first tour was six months long. And I was going to miss Christmas and I started crying, you know. (laughs) Like, I was like, I'm going to miss Christmas? Oh, my God. And now here I am in my 11th season and I'm going to miss Christmas. Yeah, I'm missing missing Thanksgiving next week. (laughs) Yeah, I, mean, I I have not been home for Thanksgiving in in like ten years. Like I don't, I don't even know what that means. Like I've had Thanksgiving <laughs> overseas for ten years. So in in that part, like I definitely have not seen my family as much as I would want, and that's like it, it, it's gotten us more separate. You know, it's I'm not as close with my family now because I don't see them very often. That doesn't mean I don't love them still the same, but it's like I just don't see them. So I'm never home for the holidays ever anymore. And like this year, I'm missing Christmas and my fiance, you know, last year he was like, oh, so last year I'm like proposing to you and we have Christmas and this year I'm going to be alone. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. No. Um, but I think. Anyways, with that all said, like, I I think one of the hardest times, actually, in, like, my career, which was, uh, was when you're actually, like, dating somebody in the company, you're on tour together, and, and the relationship goes bad, you know, and then it's a five-year process of still being on tour with this person, dancing with this person, being dance captains with this person and having an on and off relationship on and off stage is like the worst ever. (laughs) It's like really makes you much stronger. (laughs) This this is the thing. There's also this like projection stuff that's going on as in when you hit the stage, all of that past stuff that happened in the other room or the green room or the shit from a week before doesn't matter. The audience never knows. So you have to then project this happiness and da da da. This is the character stuff coming in, right? Da, da, da. Everything uh, is great. Then you go back behind the stage, you're like, you piece of crap, get out of my you know? I, know I can't, can't, can't see you. <laughs> Don't even touch me. Why are you touching me like that? <laughs> oh, and then you do the movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. No, because I was, you know, and you know this person, which is crazy to me. We won't mention but, um, any names, though. We won't. I'm not saying names. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, uh, Uh, it's like you start, and I remember one of my friends in the company, who you also know, she was like, my one advice, don't date somebody you're working with. And I was like, okay, yeah, no, I won't. Cool, whatever. And then you start dates. And and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. And there's beautiful relationships that come out of it, you know, and all this stuff. 
But I'm like, oh, no, it's going to be fine. And then literally five years of my life. <laughs> I'm like, and the only reason why it continues for that long is because you're you're on the road with this person, you know. But it's that's when I started bringing my dog on tour, which was a huge plus. Because so then, as you say, when you go back to your hotel room, you know, you're lonely, this and that. And I swear I would have never survived if I didn't have my dog Tito on tour with me. Like, Is Tito there now with you? No, he's not. Oh. <laughs> well, you're, yeah, in, no. you're in Spain. You can find some dog wandering around. <laughs> I know. I know. That was, that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was supposed to come on tour with me, and that just did not happen. That's a, you know. It's a, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of information to get dogs on tour. But at that time, he was on tour with me, like, 100% of the time. And I really feel like having, like, a love from something, even if it's an animal, was super supportive off stage. And then, yes, like, as you said, when you go on stage, that's where, like, doesn't matter what's happening in your life. You are, you are on stage to, to do the best that you could possibly do at that time for the audience because they've paid to come see you and you want to still be able to like inspire at least one person and hopefully more. So you got to, you're, you're here to be, it's like, I felt like I'm, I'm here. I'm a performer. This is my job. I still love it. And it doesn't matter what's happening in my life right now because it's not that bad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, this, when you talked about, you know, your inspiration, it's like, you become like this ambassador of being inspiration, a positive, upbeat, like, you know, people see that you, the entertainment industry is so fascinating because it, it makes people break from their normal reality. Mm-hmm. What's going on? The shit that happened at home, at work, whatever. You come watch a show like the company you work for and you're speechless because you're like, how did they defy the laws of gravity? How are they manipulating this massive prop? God, look at all this beautiful like color and, you know, and life being presented. And it just, it just takes your brain someplace else. And it's because, yeah. it's because you're up on stage doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> With the person you could care less for. <laughs> yeah, no. Good thing we're still touring and yeah. we still love each other as friends. As friends. <laughs> now, uh, this is a, this, here's a question about um, what, you know, inspiration. What is inspiring you right now? Because as we all know, artists, sometimes we, as people, humans, doesn't matter, um, there are moments where we feel like, God, my 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 pot of creativity is getting a little bit empty. You know, how do you refill it with inspiration and what are those things that, that help you mm-hmm. refill? Mm-hmm. It's a great question because I, I feel like as a dancer, sometimes we get stuck in this bubble of just doing just exactly what we're doing and there's nothing else out there, you know? So I, a couple of things. I feel like I try to surround myself with people that are, are inspiring you know it's like you contacted me and you're like this huge inspiration and it's so amazing it's gotten like all the creative juices flowing and I'm like whoa yeah we're doing this this is so fun (laughs) but so you've been a huge inspiration I love that oh thank Um, you thank you (laughs) also just um uh well my my partner in crime, Matt Giordano, is, is also a huge inspiration because he's, like, completely opposite of me. I feel like I'm really good about, like, you know, being being comfortable, dancing, doing this. But then it's like, you know, dance career is not forever oh, for sure. in this sort of level. So he's definitely, like, got me going in a sense of wanting to create something else. And this is why, you know, I'm, I'm creating something else other than just being a performer. Um, so at this very moment, actually, I'm reading a book that I love. It's called Radical Beauty, and it's, uh, it's actually right next to me, and it's by Deepak Chopra and Kimberly Schneider, and it's all about nutrition and keeping, uh, basically healing yourself, transforming yourself from the inside out. So I'm, I'm really digging deep into, like, wanting to, um learn more about nutrition and how you can stay healthy and how I can help other people stay healthy because I'm making a seven-day recipe program. <laughs> Yay! I love so to I, try the seven days. <laughs> so I'm getting all of, like, you know, 
all of the information that I already know, but I'm like still going. I'm like, give me as much information from amazing people as possible. So that's inspired me right now because I'm learning a lot. Um, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Food, <laughs> food is, um, you know, being, being well fed on the road is something to be really talked about too. I mean, mm -hmm. because we travel to so many different countries, we try so many different foods. Sometimes, I know at one point we were just totally digging on the whole kebabs, the donor kebabs. That you know what I mean. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but then it's like um, <laughs> it's the fuel. It's the fuel that we put into our system to keep us high at a, a high output of the energy. You know, on stage, and so yeah. it is, it's everything. Yeah. You know, we travel a lot, so you're up and down in pressure changes in the air. You you know your body gets knotted up. You got to be hydrated. It's like. Food is everything, especially when you're doing this type of stuff. Um, one second, Becca. My daughter's coming in the room for a second. Okay. We're back from our from the little quick break, and it's because my my three and a half year old daughter was hungry, and so <laughs> she uh, just made an interesting part, a cameo in this interview. Um, I love it. Um, anyway, the, the thing that we were last talking about is how, as performers, you know, our food is the fuel for our body to help us produce and and project what we do on stage, right? And so um, I'm happy that you've talked about you're creating this seven day meal plan because for artists uh, and who are, again, in this professional level, you need that stuff. It really helps you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of times where you know you had that one awesome, you know, green drink or something and it like sparked you and you're like, oh my God, I feel great when you're jet lagged, you know, like <laughs> it does wonders. Yeah, exactly. But <clears throat> like as, as uh, you know, what's inspired, inspiring me, it's like, I like, Specifically people that are really doing like what they want to do and to get themselves out of the bubble. It's like that's inspiring to me because um, sometimes I'm really like a little insecure about myself and this and that and and, um, and Matt specifically, my fiance, <laughs> yeah. he's really good about showing me that like you have so much information, Rebecca, and people love information. And like, that's the whole business right now is things on the internet and people just want to learn and learn and learn. And you have done this for so long. Like, why would you not want to give them information and help people be the best that they could be? You know, so that's yeah. like, that's like, oh yeah, you have to like sometimes be reminded that you, you have valuable information and you have valuable tips and you have succeeded and you have failed so you've learned a lot throughout you know the career and it's like oh yeah I can I can do this and I I can put myself out there and I it's okay <laughs> and, yeah. and if I fail it's okay and if I succeed that's woohoo awesome <laughs> yeah we will succeed I promise you yeah. I promise you and <laughs> here's well, you know here's why because um, again when you're doing when you're doing uh, performance art to the caliber of what, what what we're doing now and you know we've done in the past, um, it's very physical. As in, you're on stage, people are literally watching you. This whole mm -hmm. other ele element of like being giving informational videos or like it's very two D. So it's hard because it's like and, and it, what's the route like? As in, if you've never done video edits like that or video blogging, like how do you go about doing that? Like how do you learn how to make a website that is optimized in a way where people can find your name and what you're, it's like search engine stuff. That's so, that's in the cloud. That's a weird, that's a weird <laughs> thing. It's non-tangible to some extent for us, right? Because we're physical, we're physical yeah. expressors, right? And so the, it, the, 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 um, the pivoting, making these pivot, these pivots in your life to get into this field of work is really like you're your own pathfinder. There are yeah. some people who have already done it and you try to do the best to, um, uh, absorb their successes in, in that field of work, but then, but you're the one who has to go out and make it for your own path, for your own knowledge, right? Yep. That you're sharing exactly. With. And it's really, <laughs> it's really scary because you're like, am I doing it right? Is this working? <laughs> how am I going to market this? Who's going to listen? <laughs> it's more like learning how to sit down at a computer for a really long time and <laughs> fake it all out because you're like, what? <laughs> like, but I was, I. I have a um, a really amazing friend who who's an entrepreneur in the fitness world. Yeah. Actually, by the way, and <laughs> her and her husband have been doing this for years. So she, I've known her since I was like five years old. 
So she has been a huge help with all of the silly questions, you know, that you're like, wait, so what's a URL or like, how do I do this on the website? She basically helped me start my website. She helped me start my YouTube channel. You know, it was like, I've definitely had, she's answered all my silly questions and I'm so thankful for that because, and she's also pushed me as well, like coming up with video ideas that I can do and this, and she's like so positive and and she's doing it herself, so it is possible, and it's yeah. like, that's very inspiring, so I'm like, oh, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. I like you talked about the silly questions. There are some questions that are really silly, and you're like, like, here's an example for me. With my with my website, when I was doing my, um, the, the uh, my, having emails uh, sent to me, whatever, like when people go to my <laughs> website and they send me stuff, well, something happened, and I never knew this because I don't write code. But something happened where the emails they weren't getting, they were not being sent to my to my uh, email address. They were being rerouted someplace else. I'm like, I'm supposed to have like at least 50 emails. Where do they go? Well, I would have never known this, but it was something, something that has to do with when you're developing the website, the skeleton structure of like this code and this code has to connect with another one. My my domain name and my. Um, my website hosts and this other place, they all have to be synced up together. I would have never guessed that. If I could have physically saw it, I would have aligned it myself. But because it's in, in, the, in, it's in the cloud or wherever the hell it's at, I had to, I had to hire someone to do it for me because I would have never gotten it. Now I get all my email, I get comments, but I don't know where they were for like six months. <laughs> that's so great. Isn't that weird? I know, that's like, I, yeah, I think as like being, because we're so physically active, it's literally sitting down for like, days yeah. like I remember it's like in the winter time just like like this on my computer like researching everything <laughs> okay Uh, Clifford was pretty scary at the moment, so I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is, Clifford scares every child, so I'll leave that, I'll leave that there. Um, continuing on, Becca, uh, what's a collaboration that you're doing right now? At, like, say, I mean, obviously, obviously you're on the road, but what's a collaboration that you might be doing with somebody in the company right now, or that you're going to be doing back at home? <clears throat> Ooh, collaboration. Uh, uh, there's not many, like, dance collaborations that I'm doing right now like Steven and I we you know my dance partner we do like tons of improv on on tour because it's like so nice just to move differently you know than what we're doing on stage I'll be like Steven you want to improv and he goes okay and I pick song and we improv and we film it and then we, we try to post it on YouTube but the you know the music's always copyrighted so you can't see any of it anyways <laughs> come on they should just get over so that please fun. yeah 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 <laughs> And we've, oh, you know, we've definitely talked about, because I really want to do, um, like, partnering tutorials and stuff mm. for my YouTube channel. Yeah. So that is, like, I've definitely, like, we've talked about it, we've written everything we want to do down. That's just actually filming it and having time to actually film things. So that's, that's I guess, a collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but specifically right now, like, my projects that I'm working on, like, I just launched my new mentorship program, which is so exciting yeah on my website so that's really fun and um that i worked on during the u.s tour that we just did so i finally got that up and running on my website <clears throat> my mentorship program so that's like my my thing right now i want to help mentor people for a month or two you know i think it's like a one month three month six month program perfect and that's sometimes that's what people need sometimes you just need to get your, your foot in the door get some good advice and then move on with your life you know? Yep. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it, it helps. It helps. Sometimes you just need somebody to, to mirror, mirror their success, uh, improve some part of your life that's lacking, and then and then go on. Or come back and get yeah. more and get more, more in-depth uh, information. Yeah, I did a collaboration with a company. It's called MyQuest, and mm. they are, um, they just launched in the U.S., so I have a, how to basically be active so you can be proactive, um, and it's like a whole game it's basically a game, and there's an app for it, and I did the, um, 
all of the programs for it, so you learn, like, you, you're you basically like, oh, okay, I have to, you know, touch my toes today. This is just an example. You mm-hmm. don't really do this, but, like, I'm touching my toes six times and dancing to the music, and then you say, yay, I did it, and then it takes you to the next level. So there's, like, different levels. You get stars. You get to talk to other people that are doing the same quest, and then there's, like, a, uh, there's a whole, you know, yay, I did it, and then you... Accomplishment thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. You become more active throughout your day, so it's it's um, because activity makes your brain function so much better. Because <laughs> you're thinking, you're 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 utilizing all these different. You're re um, uh, reconnecting in your brain so many different ways because you're physically moving and you're taking in data mm-hmm. that way. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's specifically for people that aren't active, you know, dancers like us. It's for. Uh, moms who don't have any time to do, you know, activity, and this is like just gets them to do it right then and there. Yeah. Or if you're at work, you sit at, you have a desk job. It's just really fun ideas for you to move your body around to get the blood flowing, so then you can keep working through your day and you're not feeling sluggish or moody or this. It's just like it's like a exciting jump start. So that's <laughs> that that collaboration that I that I worked all winter time on. <laughs> The whole long, dark winter. The whole winter in my house, videotaping myself. <laughs> yeah, that was... While your fiancé's was... like, what the heck is she doing? I know, he was gone. I wouldn't allow him in the in the room when I was videotaping. Because now, now I'm much better, like, on yeah. camera. But first started, I cried. Like, I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> and Matt was like, Rebecca... Yes, you can. (laughs) It's a different medium, right, Becca? It's a different medium. Yes. Yeah. I literally pouted for like an hour, crying with Tino on my chest. (laughs) I remember when I first started getting into any of this stuff like two years ago. Yeah, basically two years ago. I I used to get so nervous, you know? I'm like, got to have the right uh, camera angle, got to have the right lighting, got to have the right this... And then you, there's this thing called, I've heard other people mention it before, it's this famous like statement, which is um, paralysis by perfection. You know, like you don't do anything because you're trying to, you're trying to make it so perfect, so right. Are my, are my lines correct? Or, um, you know, did I enunciate this phrase right? Oh God, I made a mistake. I made an error. Well, you know, we are human beings. We always make errors. We can't always edit everything out just to make it look so right for the audience. You know, we're on stage all the time. Now, it's a, when it's live entertainment, there's something beautiful about that. You make a mistake. It's how do you recover from that mistake? How many bad videos do you put up uh, before, before, like, say, the 20th one, and then you feel right? You feel natural, you know? Yeah. And it took time. And people know me in the company. I was tongue-tied. I was the worst Q&A person. I mean, I used to get <laughs> emotional, red in the face. Now I love it. Put me in front of an audience because I failed so many times that it's gotten to the point where I don't care anymore. I don't care how you're going to view me because I know that this this is my calling. I know that I'm doing this. This is the next, this is the phase of my life that's happening and it's manifesting because I've already gone through all those failures. So I don't care. Like, you know. Yeah. It was, it, and you're I doing the right thing, Becca. You're doing it. Woo! I, I have to tell you something funny, actually. that just happened to me, like, yesterday. Sure. I put a... a a new YouTube video up. It's like, what's my favorite makeup remover? It's a silly video. I did it, you know, like in a day or whatever. I edited it on the bus and stuff and it's whatever. And it's fun. I like it. And I put some of it up on my Instagram and somebody commented that I have a, she's like, you have a crooked face and kind of alien like, and I'm like, my God. And I was kind of like, if, if that happened to me, say six months ago I would have been like devastated you know oh because I like would have just put myself out there and I'm talking on camera and now this person is critiquing me and I was not devastated at all and I basically you know thinking like yeah I know oh you gotta go yeah one second one second hold, hold the thought okay. I'll be right back <laughs> the, the last thing you were talking about which is that you know some lady was giving you really a negative comment talking about the way you look uh, which is you know, whatever. People can have their damn opinion. But at the end of the day, are they doing what you're doing? No. So there's always going to be weird trolls or people like hating on the fact that you're trying to do something positive and, you know, great in the world that you are passionate about. So whatever. Let yeah. them say what they want to. You know. Whatever. I'm like, cool. I know I'm not perfect, but that's what you got from my video? <laughs> you got from me? 
You didn't, you didn't, you, have you even tried the procedure? How about you try it? Maybe, maybe you <laughs> like, need to try it more. I, I'm an alien? Cool, I'm from another planet. Maybe at this moment, that's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, maybe she saw something in like Lunar Sea or in... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so glad I'm really giving a good character. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Who cares? Um, here's, this is a question about goals. You know, we all uh, want to achieve goals, right? Like your goal is to get into this, this field of work, and you are. You've actually been uh, putting the steps in, the... The time, the effort, you're, you're already marketing yourself, putting yourself out there on there. So if there's a goal that you'd like to accomplish within, say, the next one to three years, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I definitely want to have at least, let's say, ooh, one to three years, though. So you have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. I would say at least 10 programs to put on my website, like has to do with exercise, nutrition, um, oh, uh, like taking care of yourself, you know, some sort of fitness plan, mm -hmm. at least like 10 programs. That would be pretty awesome. Because if I have like one, what did you say, one to three years? Yeah, one to three years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's plenty of time. Okay, um, but also I, I like my goal is to make more, more of an impact on, um, on, like the dance world. And you know what I would love to do? I would love to be like in like dance magazine. <laughs> Let's make it work. That's okay. a huge goal. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I want to be in dance magazine or like dance spirit or something. Like that's like a huge goal of mine. I would as, love as, like, as a like a, a a person who's writing an article or write up about some, yeah, or even just being featured, right? I think yeah. this is this is great. I, you know, there, I'll tell you one thing. There was something that happened just recently. A woman reached out to me who was interested in doing something for like a dance, like a dance teacher magazine or something like that. Where you know, mm -hmm. the whole the whole thing is catered to people who have who have studios, but they're teachers and you know whatever. So yeah. it didn't work out because they were looking for a specific person, and I'm like, well. But, you know, uh, I'll refer you to the person that you need to talk to. Um, but here are yeah. some things that I could, that I would love to talk about because this is my, my whole interest is about the professional side about being a freelance dancer, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she's like, that's great. You should pitch it to this person. And sometimes those things happen. Like you never know when somebody reaches out to you for one thing, but as a good marketing person, you find a way to sell, you know, yeah. give them another offer, right? And, yeah. and it will happen. Maybe... Maybe um, somebody that you get interviewed by, you can say, "Hey, I'd love to also be interviewed on this subject if you," and I can help supply the, the, the info on it. You know? Yeah, you know, something that has like even like career transition transition for dancers, like yeah. things like that. I feel like <clears throat> I'm at a point in my life where I I'm starting the transition part yeah. of it. You know, and it's had its definite ups and downs. Like the scary part of it, I think I, I've. I'm, I'm overcoming, which is awesome. <laughs> but, but um, so I think you know, from in one to three years, you said yeah, one to five one years. Three, yeah, one, one to three years. Uh, in one to three years. I think that the transition of being more um, off the road will probably happen for sure. Because I'm going to get married. You know, I, I definitely want to have a baby. Yes, of course. <laughs> I have two of them. <laughs> you don't get much sleep. <laughs> yeah, but um, um, uh, I need to have a, not I need, but you know, that's in, I see that in my future at some point. Yeah, so absolutely. transitioning more, um, doing my own thing more than just performing. Not saying that I want to quit performing, of course, because performing is still one of my top uh, priorities, but definitely making my business side of things, like my own personal uh, business, I want that to grow more. And it will because you have people following you already. You have a very uh, pretty decent sized following on like Instagram where there's like a thousand people watching you and Steve and doing some stuff in a park. <laughs> 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 and, yeah. and, and you know, the key thing for now is them also listening to your other advice that you do physically and then also what you can give them as far as knowledge base which is wonderful yeah um, what's yeah. a word of advice that you can give to let's just say um, let's give a word of advice to the the young dancer who is interested in getting into this peak level of performance that you're in and then another word of advice 
to a person who wants to understand the professional side, the business side of being a freelance artist or a professional okay. artist? Yeah. So the first one, um, my advice for young dancers who want to be in a professional dance company is to basically see as much dance as you possibly can. Go to as many dance concerts of different varieties, different shows, watch YouTube videos, and really see like what they... Um, what they're interested in and what they can see themselves fit into. Because if you're only looking at one specific thing, then um, you're, you're isolating your, your knowledge about the dance world. So I say go, like, go see dance concerts, be inspired from a theater aspect, um, and see what they, what they like. Got it. And then what about <laughs> the, um, at the other side about being the, the professional, a professional artist, as in... Maybe the way you conduct yourself, the way you should think about saving money when you're on the road, or you know, or like, hey, it is important to have an awesome CV and a headshot, you know. Saving money is huge for sure, and that's what I really didn't get. Um, I didn't get a, a lot of advice like that when I was when I was first starting. So being able to limit, not limit yourself, but have like a budget when you're on tour, so you're yeah. not just like getting um, euros and thinking it's Monopoly money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this isn't real money? What is this? I remember that. It's like, whoa, I got lots of euros. What is this? I just spent it all. And then you don't realize that, oh, this is actual money that I could have saved to pay my rent, you know, in New York City. <laughs> or... You go on tour and then you spend all your money and then you go home for two months and you're living off of unemployment or you're trying to find a job or yeah. you you can't do a bartending job because you're you're going to be on tour in another two weeks you know so then you like can't go do anything because you have not, no money in your bank account it's like a whole vicious circle so definitely saving money while you're on tour specifically is a huge help and and conducting yourselves um, professionally like when you're at a hotel because mm. you're representing the company that you're dancing for you know it's like you want to represent them in a positive way being active um, in terms of talking to the presenters talking to sponsors that come to your show being polite after the show when audience members want to ask you for your autograph or you are at a restaurant they've seen the show make sure you know they come up and congratulate you, make sure that you're nice to them and not like, you're like gracious and you're, yeah. you know? <laughs> It's like really just presenting yourself as um, a positive human being <laughs> yeah, and, and appreciate like what, appreciate what you are doing now and what you have now and also thinking about what you want to achieve and for the future. Got it. Yeah. It, it's a, it, you know, representing these companies, you are a brand ambassador, no matter how you like it, if you don't want to call yourself that, but you are. And so, like, if you do something stupid on the road and you're representing that company, it, gonna, it will tarnish that company and will jeopardize your career <laughs> quickly because these companies have been around for so long. Uh, as we all know, one negative comment or response could really affect you and your career and everything else that you're doing. So yeah. just, just be thoughtful that, what you do. Yeah, and that has to do also with, like, social media, too. You don't want to – you definitely want to represent, as you said, you're a brand ambassador, so you got to be on your social media positive, on your, you know, Snapchats and Insta stories, you're positive um, because, yeah, you're representing – you are representing the company. So that goes, like, overall, since social media is such a huge thing right now, that – it's not just your own personal thing. It's if you're on tour, you're <laughs> you're, you're on you're tour. Upsetting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got it. That's what's gonna happen to me tomorrow. No, yeah. um, <laughs> we're at the section right now in the interview where I talk. It's called the Lucky Seven, right? These seven questions that are quick, right off the top of your head, uh, fast response. And that way, people get to hear another side of you. We we already know that we're both lighthearted and we're having a great time, <laughs> and we've had a lot of interruptions with my daughter, but. Um, <laughs> Here we go. The first one is, what's your favorite drink? It can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Coffee. Coffee. Ooh, do you like it dark? Do you like it uh, caffeinated or decaf? Uh, caffeinated, and I like a good cappuccino, like with the latte art. You know, it's so pretty and perfect. Yeah, that's what I like. That's like, <laughs> that's like Italy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, where would you love to travel to? Bali. Bali. Ooh, perfect. Um, who's your favorite actor? 
Ooh. Roberto Overa? Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I gotta think about this one. Who's my favorite actor? Oh, yes. Oh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo Duh. DiCaprio. Uh, Leo, 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 Leo. Here we go. Um, <laughs> I didn't think of actors for a second. <laughs> this is probably going to you know, you. I think you already mentioned earlier, but, you know, are you a dog lover or a cat lover? Dog. All right. Um, if there's and a person. And, if, you know. <laughs> oh, say, say it again. I said, and goats and chickens, you know. <laughs> goats and chickens. That's a first. I have a dog, a cat, three goats, and three chickens. Oh but, my. of course, dog lover. <laughs> if there's a person you'd like to meet tomorrow, who would it be and why? Ooh. I would like to meet Barishnikov. Barishnikov. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Well, because he's, uh, he's like an icon and... He's a complete package when you when you look at it. Huh? He's a complete package as a as a as a taking dance and then also being an entrepreneur with it and then also being gracious about it and also being out there and uh, doing it for you know decades. I mean, this is something to to think about. Like, wow, how do you how do you keep yourself alive and fresh in people's eyes for so long? You know? Yeah. 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 Brush, uh, hands down. One hundred percent. Can I tell you something? I yeah, just sure. met the queen. Spain the other day, the and that was Spain? Awesome. Oh my god! She came to our show. We got to meet her afterwards, and she was amazing. <laughs> this she was amazing. This is crazy. The, the, the people that you guys meet on the road, Rob, you and you guys have met a lot more people than I have. Oh, I met some famous people, but you guys met some crazy, wild people, <laughs> and more exotic places and traveling. All right, favorite language you would love to learn, or any language you like to learn? Spanish. Spanish. Got it. Uh, Castilian or more like... Um... Mm, no, more like uh, Latin American. Oh, got it. Perfect. Except I did get my gracias really good. Oh, yeah, gracias. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, your favorite dessert? Ice cream. What kind of ice cream? Napoleon? Moose no. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite ice cream... Cause, well, actually, you know, I take that back. I like gelato and I like pistachio. Oh yes, is it? pistachio. Yes, pistachio. You know, the, I had that when we were in Catania in Sicily. The best. Oh. oh my god, I couldn't get enough of it. And then you come back to the states and you get like a, the pistachio. It's not the same. There's no. something about that area that's uh, enchanting. Gelato. 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 <laughs> Do you speak Italian at all or no? I speak, I know how to you know order food and yeah. I understand it a lot more. But speaking wise, I I, sh I didn't study it. At That's all. okay. I remember um, Roberto. Uh, I always keep referencing. You hear my brother's name up here. That's because Robert Roberto Vero performed with you and he was in Italy a yeah. lot and he spoke Italian, which threw me off. Now yeah. let me check and see because I believe we have our little uh, my daughter coming in. Let me see. Da, da, da. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the thing. She's, I think she's fine. So, but as we're getting closer to the end of this uh, this interview, can you please share with people your your particular social media sites? Just know that I will also post them at the end of this and also yeah. online. Um, so your website and then where people can find you on Instagram or LinkedIn and everything else. Yes. So my website is dancingbecca.com. And everything on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook is at dancingbecca. Got Twitter, it. everything is Dancing Becca. D A N C I N B E C K A. <laughs> Dancing Becca, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Becca, you're going to see somebody appear, so the audience won't, but they'll just hear the little girl. Um, <laughs> Becca, I, I, I'll, I just want to say again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Now, the audience who's listening right now, please know that this has taken almost two to two and a half months for us to finally be able to make this thing come to life because we keep traveling so much that we're in different time zones and um, sometimes internet doesn't work out and even just for example like us having this conversation today I was off by an hour because I was thinking it said Eastern or sorry uh, Central Time and uh, but I'm happy that we make magic happen in the in between times so me too <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah fun. again I would highly recommend please take a look at what Becca's doing very very knowledgeable and also check take a look at the company oh oh there's the interruption and I I can't edit that it's really tricky but I will say this 
please listen to what Becca has to say. She's been doing it for a very long time. There's a lot of insights that you're going to find that will help you in your life. So be well, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Becca. Bye. Becca, stay on, though, for a second. Bye. Okay. <laughs>